On August 31st, 2018, agents assigned by the Chinese Communist Party organized some relatives of Christians from the Church of Almighty God, who had fled to South Korea from China to hold a press conference at the Jeju Parliament under the pretext of seeking for relatives. They strongly requested the Korean authorities to deport the displaced Christians back to China. Between September 1 and September 4, Ms. Oh, a pro-Chinese Korean activist, recruited professional demonstrators, along with some relatives of Christians from the Church of Almighty God, to stage false, spontaneous demonstrations, respectively, at the church's communities in Seoul and Chungcheonbuk-do. And before the Blue House, the executive office of the President of South Korea, during the demonstrations, Mr. Peter Zorer, an Austrian reporter and the executive director of the Forum for Religious Freedom Europe, was one of the witnesses on site. He witnessed the hateful representations of the self-styled demonstrators and had interviews with some Christians from the Church of Almighty God who are in South Korea. He stated that the Church of Almighty God has been subjected to persecution in China and that the church members had fled to South Korea and sought asylum there for religious freedom. He also pointed out that it is the Chinese Communist Party that had disrupted their families, while the Church of Almighty God had not been responsible for family disruption. Please join us for the footage of his interviews. Uh, to, today, this morning, we, we went to to the Blue House, uh, and and the, uh, also Mrs. O was there, and she was very angry with me. She, show me, show me your, uh, give, give me your business card, give me your name card. Mm -hmm. so that I, I, I asked her, give me yours. And I, I said to her, I know who you are. You are Mrs. O, right? <laughs> so, uh, anyway, they are very angry now. Uh, because, uh, and, and uh, there was one journalist beside her. Uh, he was not a real journalist. He, he said he was a journalist, but he did not show me his uh, credentials. You know. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, he was he was an agent of uh, CCP. He asked uh, our two cameramen. You know, I had two cameramen. Mm -hmm. He asked them, "Are you, you know, uh, from China? Are you do you have relatives? And so, mm -hmm. uh, who are you?" And, mm -hmm. uh, and very angry. Mm -hmm. So I told him, uh, "You are not a journalist, are you? Why are you so aggressive?" I said to him. Mm -hmm. This is a free country. Uh, Korea is a democratic country. There is religious freedom here, and uh, you know freedom of opinion. He said. Oh. So uh, I, uh, for me, these are very important experiences because I can understand much more now about this situation. I would start with my experience of persecution in South Korea. I came to South Korea in May 2015. My wife came to South Korea to find me in May 2016. When I heard the news, I was also very excited because I hadn't seen my family for more than one year. When I met them, I was very happy. I saw my son, my sister, and my wife. We talked very late that night. We talked about our family affairs, and I also had a video chat with my parents and learned what had happened in my home. And I told them my situation here. I said, I have a good life here. Because of the situation in China, I, I can't go back. I asked my wife, if possible, you could stay in South Korea with our son so we can live here together. But she immediately rejected me saying, no, you must go back with me. Why, I asked. 
She said, our family has connections with the CCP. If you are back, you will be fine. I know about the CCP, so I didn't believe her. And I told her, if I go back, we won't be together. I'll be arrested and put into prison. And I will even be beaten and disabled. If I were able to get out of the jail, I must forsake my belief, which I will definitely not do. Later, both of us insisted on our own views. Then they'd like to change to another hotel. There was a man in that hotel who came from China along with her. He was actually a Chinese agent. But at that time, I didn't know too much about it, so we went to that hotel. But the next day, my wife told me how I would be fine if I went back. She even had me talk to a policeman in China through WeChat who said I would be fine. And I learned that all of the information she had in order to find me was from this policeman. At that moment, I understood that she was instigated by the CCP to come here to extradite me to China. I resolved not to go back to China with her. Many times I invited her to stay in South Korea with our son so we could live together. Seeing this, she said in a firm tone, you have to go back no matter what. You must go back with me. This is what happened when we met on May 22nd. Two days later, on the morning of May 24th, I found an opportunity to escape. The day before I escaped, he took away two of my cell phones, passport and money purse. Well, here in Korea? Yeah. yeah. Really? Who, who, took, who took your passport and your money? The agent. The day before I escaped, when I went into my room, I saw that agent there. When he saw me, he left quickly. I later checked my bag and I found my passport and cell phones were gone. When I discovered that they wanted to forcibly bring me back to China, the next day, that is, May 24th, I managed to escape. I had three cell phones, two of them were taken away by them. And the third one I carried might be installed with some Trojan horse program. Because even though I didn't call her, very soon they found me at the airport. At the airport, my sister suddenly grabbed my cell phone behind me. I managed to grab it back and I started to run. And that agent started to chase after me, calling my name and asking me to stop. At the moment, I was very nervous and very scared. I tried to run through the crowds. After I got out of the airport on Jeju Island, I went from street to street, from corner to corner, and I dared not stop running. I didn't dare to turn on my cell phone and couldn't contact the brothers and sisters in the church. I ran for about three hours. Later, he used my cell phone to call one of the sisters in the church and threatened that if I didn't get in touch with them, they would reveal the information about my passport and other things and I would be in great danger. We have the recording of this conversation. About three months later, she came again. And before she came, this time, they had contacted the KBS reporter. It was Miss O oh who planned the whole demonstration on August 28th before one of our churches in Guru Gu, Seoul. Yeah, it was August 28th, 2016. After that demonstration ended, my wife stayed in South Korea for some time. During that time, there was a plan for me to meet my wife and son. But on the day before our meeting, they changed their minds and did not allow me to meet them. In less than one week, they said they wanted to meet me. But on the day before the set date, they cancelled again. Afterward, I could not meet them. Yesterday, she came again. She was shouting there that I was not willing to go out to meet her. In fact, this is totally not true. How do you feel now uh, about this situation? She didn't come here voluntarily. I once told her, you'll be able to meet me if you're willing. It's impossible that you want to meet me, but I'm not willing. But she still chose a violent way. So I realized that she has been controlled by the CCP. And I feel it's pitiful that they are the cards played by the CCP. 
Thank you very much, everybody. And uh, 